Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. Now I have uh, started up this new channel. I used to have another channel with uh, well, several hundred videos, uh, 450 to be exact, on my previous channel. And um, on this new channel here, Linux for Seniors, I'm going to slow down a little bit. So my videos are going to be moving forward more than two minutes. So if you are looking for something like speed reading videos on Linux, because that's what I'm used to seeing from a lot of other folks that make Linux videos. They're trying to cram a ton of information inside of a minute or two, and you barely understand them. Now, I'm not going to do that on this channel. I'm going to slow down and try to explain myself to the masses. And I don't even know what your skill level is, but more importantly, I'm going to try to make it understandable of whatever subject matter I'm talking about. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about software for Linux. I do encourage that you subscribe. Again, this video is going to be more than two minutes. If you can't stand that, then I would not suggest you subscribe and move elsewhere. But if you want to learn a little bit more details about uh, different functions of Linux, then uh, you may want to subscribe. And when you're a subscriber, you can start watching this video, stop it, come back tomorrow or the next day and watch the remainder or even next week. That's the benefit of being a subscriber. All right, so my agenda is to share information. So today's video, I'm going to talk about software. Now, I cannot talk about every single software package manager, graphical user interface or GUI out there, or even talk about installing software in your terminal boxes because the commands are different from each distribution. However, the software I'm going to present here should be available, or at least you should be able to look for it in your distribution if you're not using specifically this distribution I'm using today. So today's distribution I'm using today is a customized version of Linux Mint. All right, I'm going to open up my software manager. The icon for the distribution looks different than this one. However, their software manager operates the same. I did not alter any of that. So a lot of folks, when they often open up their graphical user interface software manager, in their distributions, a lot of times it will not tell you how many pieces of software are available to you. If you are curious for this distribution, this is called min install, another name for that is software manager in Linux Mint. I'm going to use a different piece of software here to tell you how many pieces of software are available for the most part in this distribution called Synaptic Package Manager. In a lot of different Linux distributions, you can use uh, different ways of installing software. The most common one are terminal, you know, using terminal to ins uh, use commands to install software. And uh, anyway, Synaptic Package Manager, I can also use to install software, but that's not the reason I opened this. I wanted to point down to this area here that I'm, my mouse is circling. It's the number of packages listed, pieces of software, applications, 72,000 plus. Okay, so there's uh, a Heinz variety of software for each distribution, but uh, in the general vicinity of thousands, let's put it that way. So uh, Synaptic Package Manager for this distribution does not reflect Flatpak software. What is Flatpak software? If you've heard of Snaps for other distributions and Flatpak, they're similar. They're self-contained applications. In other words, when you download a piece of Flatpak software, it's usually a large uh, download and installation because it's self-contained. It contains everything that you need to run. And a lot of different, um, different Linux distros support Flatpak software. And by the way, I'm, I'm, I'll talk about this in a second. There was a wallpaper that automatically changed in the background. And that's another piece of software you can download. But... Uh, before I get into that, let me talk about FlatHub for a second. That's where this stuff is coming from. This is coming from a separate source than Linux Mint and Ubuntu, because that's mainly where the software that Linux Mint has is coming from the Linux Mint uh, world and the Ubuntu world. But Flatpak software, other, on the other hand, comes from a different source. And I'm going to open that source right now. It's called FlatHub.org. And yes, you can search for applications in here. And, and if you click on the installation key for any of these things, it'll send you a link. And then open up your package manager if you're using a package manager 
on your system and open it. Let me show you all the different Linux systems that use this. Maybe your distribution is in this list if you're using one of these distributions. There's Linux Mint's logo right there. If I click on it, it says flat pack support is already built into Mint 18 or higher. No setup required. Some of them will have a command line, like Manjaro doesn't need anything. Let's find some Archbase uh, or like an Endeavor OS. So you'll have to perform some of these to install flat packs and the repository. And you can see where they're coming from. Okay, so all these different distributions use flat pack software. Maybe you're using MX, maybe you're using Manjaro, maybe you're using a Debian based type of uh, thing. Maybe you're using an Ubuntu based uh, Linux distro, Chrome OS. Red Hat, Pop OS, and countless others. Let's move on. All right, so the first piece of software I'm gonna talk about is this wallpaper changer thingy. So uh, on my distribution, Variety is available uh, in the software managers. And you should be able to find Variety also uh, in your particular um, software manager, or you can do a search for it. So Variety is an automatic wallpaper changer, downloader and manager. It is a very cool tool, been using it for many, many years. It has a preference box where I can turn off this and it will just remain, this wallpaper will stay there. If I turn this back on, I can change this to even five seconds if I want. And it'll cycle through the wallpapers from all these sources, including my, my folders that I put in here manually. I have two different folders that I manually put in here, wallpapers and Star Wars. I can turn them off. This is going to continually cycle every five seconds until I change that timer. Or if I do this, this now it'll just pause on this wallpaper. You can put your own wallpaper of your kids, your pets, or whatever you downloaded wallpaper or even made up your own wallpaper. It's a very cool application. So I am going to change this back to five minutes. The other cool thing in some distributions, you can actually point at the icon if it's installed in your panel bar and using your computer mouse scroll wheel is to scroll up or down and it will change the wallpaper for you. If not, you can click next or previous. So let me find something that, uh, I'll just leave that up for a second. And then in a couple of minutes, this will change. Now let's go back to software manager. And I already talked about flat packs and uh, where the software is coming from. So let's talk about the applications names. So I already showed you variety. So let's go search for that. There's also Wallach for a wallpaper changer too, if you're curious, you, know, you can look that up. But anyways, I, I, I like this uh, variety for uh, reasons of um, I can plug in my own folders to pull wallpaper from. And there's no screenshot here, but no big deal. And you can uh, search for a variety on your distribution also. It's a pretty fairly small download. All right, so let's talk about some different software. You know, everybody has a different thing. What do you use your computer for? Let's talk about that briefly here. Now, uh, a lot of seniors use these for surfing the internet. So web browsers are important to them. Maybe they type a document or two once in a while in print. So that would be like an office application, word processor in other words. Okay, but I'm gonna walk through a lot of these things today. Maybe you're into editing photos. Maybe we'll start there. So I could click the graphic area and talk about GIMP for a second, but I'm going to do it a little differently. Um, through this application, I'm going to actually do a search. Because I'm going to show you in this particular software manager that I have two different versions of GIMP. GIMP is like Photoshop in the Linux world. I use it pretty heavily. I had a previous YouTube site, which I did 450 plus videos that I used this particular uh, program to edit the thumbnails with. So this is GIMP. You can edit um, thumbnails. You can um, take, I'm sorry, not thumbnails. You can edit photos. You can convert photos, resize them, 
You can even build, um, I've actually made icons using this. And uh, there's also the FlatHub version of it. It's a strange name, GNU Image Manipulation Program. In other words, GIMP. Okay, there's an example of the interface right here. All right, and you have all kinds of tools and filters. Would you like to see how, what it actually looks like? All right, I'm gonna actually open it because I have it installed here. Now, this is, again is Linux Mint customized, so some of my icons are different from the standard ones. Just some icons, not all. But here's a standard version, and I'll open up uh, something recent, like this uh, photograph, for instance. And uh, it's just a, a photograph of the sea. As a matter of fact, it's the same photograph that's on my header on my new YouTube site, Linux for Seniors. But I wanted just to point out the fact that it's in English because my language packs are in English. That uh, your screenshots that you see sometimes on the software managers are in a different language. But when you install whatever language packs for your system, it, it should install the correct language for it. So, but more importantly, I just wanted to let you see some of the filters. There's Heinz variety of filters by default. Then there's also add-ons. What are add-ons? They're like plugins. There's also help. And then there's uh, online manuals, help online, all kinds of things. Like I said, I used to use this very real heavily and I'll still continue using it for this new channel. And it's available at Flathub, probably Snap, uh, Snap packages also. And in this case, uh, from Linux Mint. So. As you can see, this is a 21 megabyte download versus the flat pack version is 128 megabytes. It's a little bit larger. All right. The reason I punched it up here is because I wanted to let you see the extra plugins. The ones with the green check marks in this distribution are installed. In other words, they have a remove or a launch key. The uh, stuff that is not enlarged, like this animation package, for instance, I can add it. To this and you can see all the different plugins that are available there's a huge scroll bar here by the way that's just one example of one particular piece of software to edit stuff with now there's also um, let me go back to graphics there's also a lot of different software that you can use to edit things with um, I think, uh, I thought I saw it in here. Yeah, Darktable is another one. And then if you're into simple painting programs, My Paint maybe. Um, Tux Paint for the Kids, or for Young at Heart. <laughs> um, next one next to it is Krita. Been around for a while. There's all kinds of things in here. Inkscape if you're looking for vector-based drawing programs. Uh, this is also available uh, for other operating systems. I believe this is also available for Microsoft and Macs. And by the way, GIMP is also available for your uh, Windows and Macs, just as an FYI. All right, so those were graphic editors and paint programs. Now let's talk a little bit about Office. A lot of people type documents and print them and... Uh, there's a lot of free office suites. Let me refresh this and click that one more time. Uh, LibreOffice is installed on this system. So LibreOffice contains uh, text document, spreadsheet application, presentation application, drawing database, and so forth and so on. Um, LibreOffice Writer, typical view of that. It looks like this and um, you know, you can, just try to start typing and it starts to guess why you misspelled that. What do you want? I wanted the word test, for instance. You can also customize the icons just like you can in Microsoft Office. And uh, you also have help online. And this version of LibreOffice is 7.3. I believe there's a newer version out there also on some distribution at 7.4. Anyways, LibreOffice. Sweet, um, I'm not going to save this document. The best price is it's free. Is the software in software managers on most distributions free? Yes. 
This is open source software. That's the Linux world is open source software. Sure, you will have uh, Spotify will probably ask you for a subscription uh, for their paid version. Steam is another one that will ask you for a subscription for games, for instance, and stuff like that. In general, though, no software is free. All right, so um, go back in to Office. You have LibreOffice. There's other Office suites. You also have text editors. Uh, they, they do not have uh, spell checkers, but if you're writing text documents or creating scripts, for instance, uh, I've used um, Kate and other text editors. Uh, there's the old ones are Emacs and uh, so forth and so on. I'm not going to get into too much of that. Now, LibreOffice also uh, comes with an interesting feature. Or if you haven't done this yet, if you've uh, got LibreOffice installed, there's other additional stuff you can install with LibreOffice or at least check out the additional software that has the word LibreOffice in it. Okay. So um, like if you're using the Plasma version on some distributions, here's the Plasma version. Okay. So um, you can have, uh, you know, there's different, um, how do I put this? If you haven't seen my videos on uh, different distributions and desktops, so you have, uh, this is a Cinnamon desktop, for instance. There's also XFCE desktop and Plasma desktop is what I'm referring to. Okay. A lot of different things out there. All right, speaking of um, after you install Office, would you like some fonts to go with that? Now, you know, most distributions all already install a ton of fonts, but let's say you wanted some Microsoft fonts, for instance, some of these guys. And uh, look for that. MS core fonts, if you're into some of those core fonts or some of these other additional fonts. Keep in mind that anything in here without a green check mark is not installed. So I have a lot of options and you can notice my scroll bar is very small. I got a lot of things I can scroll for. So that's fonts. Now let's move on to sound and video for a second. Are you into uh, maybe burning CDs or DVDs? Well, if you are, I have used a couple of them, and uh, K3B, I would recommend, is a CD and DVD burning, uh, burning application that's available for most Linux distros, distributions. There's also Berzero. And if you're using an XFCE distribution, uh, you may want to try XFBurn. You may already have that installed on a lot of XFCE uh, distributions, but there's uh, the CD burner for the XFCE desktop environment. Very simple one. All right, so sound and video. There's a lot of things in here. So music players, too many to shake a stick at, but I will talk about a couple of them. Rhythmbox, I'll make a larger thumbnail out of this, has playlists. If you got anything in your music folder when you first open up this one, it will import the songs automatically. You don't have to do anything other than to create your own playlist. That's a cool feature. So in this distribution, I have a folder called music. As soon as I dump my music folders in here and open up, say, Rhythmbox, it imports them automatically. Very nice feature. Don't have to do much work other than to create your own playlist. There's also Clementine. I'll just name some uh, other players off the top of my head. So again, there is Rhythmbox, there is Clementine, there is Celluloid, SM Player, Elza, Sonora, and countless others. All right, so now maybe you're into uh, looking at something for your webcam. You can try Cheese. I tell you what I use. If you have seen my intro video on my new YouTube site, Linux for Seniors, I'm going to show you the piece of software that I used to uh, do the hook up the camera to the system because I use nothing but open source software. So it is uh, a weird spelling. It's G U V. And I'll probably have to switch this over for a second. Not too many. 
I never remember how to spell that. G U V. There's a C in there. There we go. There we go. It is the strangest spelling. However, um, it is. Uh, this is a horrible screenshot. Um, if again, if you want an example of the actual uh, what it looks like, go take a look at my intro video to uh, Linux for seniors. But more importantly, I'll just give you a quick 411 on this. Um, you can control the brightness, contrast, saturation. I've hooked up multiple different cameras on it before. You can change the video resolution depending on what kind of camera you have. And uh, you can resize the boxes because they'll be superimposed on your screen. So it's a, you know, a video inside of the screen. And I've also used simple screen recorder. And that's what I'm currently using to uh to do that with in addition to that software so my camera is hooked up and also simple screen recorder is recording the background and the superimposed video at the same time so speaking of that simple screen recorder can be found here in this distribution under sound and video if you are um, using it's right here if you're using an x11 environment if you do not know what that is uh, some distribution use Wayland for a um, environment. You may want to check that out because uh, I don't believe a simple screen reporter recorder, sorry, uh, supports Wayland. It does support the X11 environment, which Linux Mint is. Okay. So anyway, simple screen recorder I've been using for many years, and it's uh, actually recording this video today. You can see it right here. It's running. Tell me what kind of resolution mode. And I'm currently at 21 minutes. So better get cracking, as one would say. I'm going to say no on that because I definitely don't want to pause that. All right, let's get going. And um, so I talked about uh, the CD burning software, multimedia, uh, multimedia codecs. I did not. So just put in multimedia. Some distribution... Um, Offer this. Let me copy this and go over to sound and video for a second. Uh, oh, there it is. So, multimedia codecs is sometimes required of some players for certain type of videos. And um, this one here happens to be the uh, Mint Meta Codex. Your other distributions will have something similar for the multimedia uh, codecs. The codec just means uh, encoder and decoder. Decodes and encodes um, videos and formats like that. All right, well, that may be getting ahead of uh, a lot of folks, but anyways. Just wanted to point out that if you do have that when you're installing your Linux distro, you probably want to click on that and say yes, install that because a lot of them are proprietary codecs. But um, you probably need them to play certain videos anyways. So go for it, as one would say. All right, I talked about uh, the different players uh, for your sound and video, your rhythm time, rhythm box, your Clementine box, uh, players. Um, I didn't touch upon Audio City, so if you're into uh, making ringtones, for instance, and you get energetic and want to take a song and chop a ringtone out of it, and uh, I believe you can do that on your Android phones for the most part. So you can take out a piece of sound, chop it out, make a ringtone out of it. You may want to try out this one. It's a cross-platform audio editor. can be a steep learning curve, though, to understand how it works to do that kind of stuff. VLC, very popular multimedia streamer, comes natively installed on some distributions and not on others. Okay, I think uh, between the uh, players and the recording software, the only thing I'm going to make mention of, a lot of distributions also include screen capture, uh, sorry, uh, screenshot software. So this distribution is just SC for screenshot. And you'll find that in a lot of Linux distros that it will have a screenshot application where you can take a picture of the whole screen, including the panel bar, or just the window that you're working with. 
In other words, if I take a screenshot of this box here, it doesn't matter where I place it. Uh, the system will find it. I'm going to take a screenshot of this box only. It's not going to take a picture of the background or the panel bar. So take the screenshot and it's going to ask me where to send it to. I'm going to send it to my desktop. So and I'll save it there. I'm waiting for the thumbnail to build. And I'll minimize that while it's building the thumbnail. Now when I open this up, this is the actual screenshot. Okay. That's just the thumbnail. It's a PNG of this. That's all that was. So you notice that there is no background. In other words, there's, it just took a picture of the box. It didn't take a picture of any of the wallpaper or the panel. You can see it right here. It's just the box. So most of your screenshot tools that you have on your distributions is very intuitive. It'll, uh, it'll find these boxes wherever you place them. Even if I resize this and take another screenshot using the same method and send it to the desktop, you will see that it will only take a picture of this box. I'm still waiting for the thumbnail to build. And then I'll make it smaller. Now you can see it's cut off. Exactly the same spot I cut it off. So they come in handy for different purposes. You're looking through a website and you need a quick screenshot of something. You know, you went like that. Uh, you're in a minimized mode and you're just curious about this. You just do this. I have a, a shortcut of that same thing here. Send it to the desktop or wherever folder you want to send it to. Normally you'll have that option on your distribution also. So now I'm going to close this and let's open up this screenshot and reduce that. All it is is a screenshot of what I just made. It doesn't include the whole screen on this one because that's where my screenshot left off. It was just a quick snap and you can see the whole web browser thing all the way down to the bottom line of where I snapped the, uh, the screen. In other words, uh, let me reopen this. As you can see, this is cut off right here. So if, if I were to get the whole thing, I would probably make another screenshot using this bottom half, for instance. So I could still do that. And I'll go back to my shortcut and do the window again and then take a second screenshot and save it. Now I'm going to close both boxes. So the first one is the top half of that box. Again, I'm going to double click on it. So reduce it down for you a little bit. Now that's the top half. Close. And now I'm going to do the bottom half. And that's the bottom half, including all the goodies on the bottom. So screenshots come in handy for multiple reasons. You're looking for information online, for instance, and you don't want to hand type something down. You got your web browser open. Do a quick screenshot of whatever. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick also. Um, I'll do the same thing here. Um, I'm just going to make a screenshot out of something inside of here. So I'm going to go to the same tool, except I'm going to do selection this time. Take a screenshot. Now everything turned gray and I'm just going to drag a box and snap and send it to the desktop. This is if you're looking for information like um, maybe you're on your insurance website or bank or whatever it might be. You just wanted a quick screenshot. And there you have it. A little tools of the trade. Screenshots come in handy for multiple things. All right, let's go back to Software Manager. So, you know you have a lot of tools in Sound of Video. Um, let me get this full screen this time. And um, we're looking for something to organize photos from, for instance. So let's type that in. So we have some things in here that come under the category of photos. It all depends on what you're doing with yours and what distribution you're using. But uh, you will find a lot of applications that has a reference to some photo organizer. However, you can install these things. However, did you also know your file managers also have that capability built into them? Now, your file, the file manager for this distribution, and in my icon is custom, uh, but the file manager I did not custom, this was called Nemo. You will also have file managers that are called like Thunar or Nautilus 
or just files for GNOME. They all have the capability of displaying thumbnails for photos. So I'm going to go to my pictures folders and mine is quite large, but I'm just going to drop the uh, wallpaper folder up for a second. These thumbnails are normally uh, capable of resizing. You can resize them all the way down to dinky. I'm doing this using two keys, which is a special, um, Never mind. You can use the little drag bar here. You can go to your view menus and uh, do the zoom in and out. Okay. When I get into individual type of uh, file managers in the future videos, you may want to subscribe and pay attention to that. I'll show you all the different tips and tricks of different file managers. And I'm not going to say one is better than the other because they all have their pluses and minuses. But more importantly, what I'm saying here is you can even take this tiny little photo and make it bigger by double clicking on it. Or in this distribution, I can hit the space bar to get a larger version of that and hit the space bar to close it. You notice there's no other keys here. It's a quick previewer. In other words, if I double click on that, I can get that and I can actually turn this into a slideshow. There's a lot of little tips and tricks with a lot of different file managers. But what I'm wanting to get at is if you are looking for something just to display your photos, you can use your file managers in Linux to do that with. And I'll make these larger. I have a lot of strange wallpaper. Yeah, you may, you know, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you probably will agree that some of that looks kind of weird. But I've got a large collection over the years that I've kept collected wallpaper and some of these are actually photos so and a lot of distributions also will allow you to set your photos as wallpaper this one does that's the same picture of that as wallpaper now the only thing about uh, this one is um, if I wanted to keep the image I would probably need to pause this or go into my preference box and uncheck this box right here to keep that picture from changing. Now it wasn't fast enough. So now it went to the next photo in this variety application, but I'm going to leave that off for a second and pick another one. So if I wanted that wacky doodle looking uh, wallpaper here, I could just do it this way. Now you can get a, you can see a bigger version of that. Let me minimize that for a second. Uh, skateboarders going back and forth. So if you've got pictures of um, nature or kids or whatever it might be, I'll set this one as wallpaper. It doesn't really matter. You know, my family usually don't like me posting their own photos here. That's why I'm not putting up any of their photos of kids or family here, even though you can probably see some of the thumbnails in there. But uh, anyways, these are coming off of my digital cameras. So this came off of uh, my iPhone 12 Pro Max and set as wallpaper. So it's just a weird tree growing out of a rock. So anyways, it doesn't matter. So let me go back to my standard wallpapers. I'm just going to scroll this thing once and then turn this back on again. So a lot of Linux distributions offer you this kind of software variety and you can do all kinds of things with your wallpaper. I'm the kind of person that don't like a lot of icons on my desktop. Some people fill their desktop with icons. That's, that's all up to you. I like to keep my icons down here on my panel bars and inside my menus. That's all up to you. So software manager, let's get back on topic. <clears throat> software managers for different distributions have uh, for the most part, for the visual experience, have a different way to present the software, but a lot of the software that you see here is also available for just about any other Linux distribution. You just have to search for it, and it all depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for office suites, graphic programs? Are you looking for system tools, sound and video, players, and or editing programs? That's all up to you. Even games. Does Linux play games? Yes, it does. 
Now, I'm just going to talk about this very briefly for your adventurous folks. Um, maybe you do have a decent graphic cards on your computer you have uh, your distribution installed on. I'm just going to talk about one high intensity graphic game and then um, I'll talk about board games. So I'll start with the board games and uh, you know you can pick your simple um, backgammon games or card games, chess games, and then they have some that are multiple games on multiple di different distributions. Like this is Gnome Games. It's more than one in other words. There's more than six actually if you install this. This also has a flat pack version. Let me show you those screenshots. Okay, so you're into uh, different kinds of games. So again, uh, depending on what kind of game it is, if it's graphic intensive, so hopefully you have a, a video card that is uh, probably in the two megabyte and above, sorry, two gigabyte or above range, then you can play some decent 3D graphics. Let me show you one example of that. So you'll have to more likely do a search for this in your dist distribution. Um, sorry, didn't spell it right. It's another one of those that has a weird spelling on it. So it's called Exonotic. So in this distribution, I have to get it from FlatHub. In other words, it's Flatpak software. It is a pretty hefty download. As you can see, it's a 1.2 gigabyte download and uh, it states it consumes 1.2 gigabytes of space. You can also download different maps for this. You can find them on the internet. But uh, more importantly, this game here can be installed. I brought this in as a folder because I have multiple Linux distributions and I, all I do is create launchers. And that's another video for itself another day. But uh, that game is sitting right here. I have two versions of it, the new version and the, the old version. The old version will ask and nag me for an upgrade. So I will just bring this one up for a second. My screen is 43 inches, not that it's represented here on YouTube. I have a six gigabyte video card if you're curious. And I am using an AMD Ryzen 9 processor on this computer. So it's got fairly good horsepower. There's the nag screen I was telling you about. All right, so you can see by this uh, multiplayer, there are plenty of people or at least servers online. But you can also play this game offline. You have uh, a bunch of different modes. And uh, I'm just going to pick the first one here. And you can also play against bots. In other words, AI players, artificial intelligence players. Okay, they'll be playing, uh, trying to shoot you, in other words. <laughs> so this is a first shooter type of game. So let's pick something with, uh, I'll pick this one here since it has some bright colors. This one here has two modes. Sometimes it's dark and sometimes it's not. I'm going to use no bots, but as you can see, I can fill in and use bots also. Just giving you a, a quick example of the graphics and hopefully the sound is not going to be too loud for you. Five minutes remain. Okay, so I will um, just enter the game here for a second just to let you see some of the weaponry. I only got the one. Uh, let's go look around. This is not an Xbox, but more importantly, this game is free. Uh, it has several maps, and uh, more importantly, the graphics are not too bad. Just to give you some idea of what some of that stuff looks like. Here's a nasty machine gun. And I'll leave it at that. So yes, Linux does play certain games. Now, again, this is not an Xbox. But if you are adventuresome, you can in, try to install some of these games, like Exonotic, for instance. Or if you're into simple games, then go with the board games, or um, you can see the different categories here. And a lot of these games are, again, available in your other Linux distributions also. So I think on this note, since this is getting lengthy, I'll leave it at that. I do encourage that you subscribe if you are still watching. Hopefully you are. And I will be uh, producing a lot more videos down the pike on all kinds of different subjects that I think pertain to how seniors interact with the Linux operating systems. And I'll be using different Linux um, distributions and desktops uh, producing these videos moving forward. 
And on that note, I will say thank you for watching. And you folks have a wonderful day.